Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer and today we're taking a look and installing Sumo Springs front helper springs on a 2005 Workhorse W series. Now this is going to be a quick easy upgrade that's going to replace those factory jounce bumpers and that way you have a little bit more steering feel, brake feel and overall just a better driving experience. Now with our Sumos installed, you're gonna notice pretty quickly uh, once you lower that front down to get that axle back to normal height that there's not a whole lot of gap under here where these Sumos are gonna rest, especially compared to our factory jounce. And that's a good thing. It's going to initiate quicker and just there's gonna take less gap here for that sway to allow before engaging. And something else I'll point out is if you look at the factory Johns bumpers, these are hollow inside here. I can reach my finger all the way in and I can actually kind of compress this with my fingers, which for a vehicle passenger car, probably okay. But for something this heavy duty, these do seem a little inadequate. And this is where those swimmers are really gonna come into play, especially when we're doing those hard turns. And when it comes to suspension, whether it be for a truck, a car, or even an RV, it really does I think it's one of the better investments that you can do as far as upgrades on your vehicle. And that's because it's working every single time you drive it. And sometimes people go, well, is it really that noticeable? And I'm gonna tell you this, most of the suspension components that we do here on RVs especially are extremely noticeable. And I'm just testing it in our test course here that we have in our parking lot. We're simulating bumps here. and. A lot of what you're gonna see improvement wise with these sumo springs is gonna be the side to side action. So just that sway as you're kind of going around turns, it sure does feel top heavy as this just kind of wants to lean side to side. And that's where those, uh, you know, they really help along um, just making sure that you have that compression to really hold against it. So it's not necessarily beefing up your suspension, but they are gonna be a little bit taller and that's gonna allow you to have quicker engagement. So instead of it leaning before before it's on those jounce bumpers, it's going to bite into it a little bit earlier. And that's a good thing. It's not going to be rough or harsh. It's actually a nice progressive foam there. So it's going to give you a nice firm feel in a good way. It's not going to rattle you. It's just going to keep this side to side movement quite a bit, uh, a little, well, just a little less aggressive. And honestly, especially when going down the road on a windy day um, or getting a crosswind, you can really tell the difference when a vehicle just wants to kind of push you around. And when driving something like this, it's already not exactly the most easy driving situation, especially in bad weather. So to give you a little bit better feel and handling, it's just gonna give you a nicer overall experience. And it's just gonna be a little less white knuckling. I'm gonna take this back into the shop We'll get these installed and I'll show you how to do that. And then we're gonna see the difference that it makes. And of course, it's hard for me to quantify that just through words, but I'll tell you pretty, pretty certainly that this does make a big difference once they're installed and I'm excited to see it on this RV. Now it's super easy to install. Your old Johns bumpers generally just have a nut up top and they unscrew. So you can get these popped in fairly easily. Yeah, I'd say about an hour or so, if, as long as you can jack up the front of your RV to get them on and as long as you're doing the front ones. But this is also just a nice, easy way to enjoy driving your RV a little bit more. They're also gonna be holding up for the lifespan of the RV as well, because they're resistant to oils, road grime, whatever you throw at it, and also temperatures that you probably won't see, ranging from a negative 25 up to 200 degrees. So even under the RV, and they're not gonna break down over time. So this is one of those upgrades that you can put in easy, you're gonna get great results every time, and they're gonna last the lifespan of your RV. I'm gonna show you how to install yours, and that way you can enjoy and notice the difference that the Sumo Springs make. So we need to set up our vehicle before getting these on, and that's really, I think, the hardest part of getting these installed is you are gonna need your axle to drop down a little bit, and that's to create space for the Sumo Spring. You can see it's quite a bit taller than that factory jounce bumper, and you're gonna to need to be able to get that stud through the hole. So what I've done is just put a jack on our front beam support and raised it up enough, you're gonna see this gap become larger and just raise it up enough to where you can get this in place. And once that's seated in there, you should be good. But while jacking up your RV, obviously make sure that you put your parking brake on and that you've chalked the back while raising up the front. Now the Jones bumper is just secured by a 15 millimeter nut 
that's on the stud. Now this is gonna be in your frame rails and the passenger side is gonna be a little bit easier. So you might wanna do that one first. And the only reason is because you have hard brake lines sometimes on your frame um, that can kind of get in the way of the socket. And really this just spins on that nut. Um, so if you can get a socket on there, it's gonna be a 15 millimeter or even a wrench. It is slightly recessed, um, but you are gonna need a deep well if you use the socket to go over that stud. And if you can hold that in place or use the frame rail to kind of uh, keep that wrench in place, you should be able to just twist the jounce bumper and it should get loose and then you can just spin that off. So I've gone ahead and put my socket on there. Um, if you need to, you can put a little penetrating oil if it's rusty. Chances are, you know, just kind of being underneath the vehicle, it's gonna see that road grime. But really, if I can just get that knocked loose just a little bit, that should allow us to really get this spun off pretty easily. So let me just give it a quick bump and that I think should be just enough for us to be able to rotate this. Pretty close, we'll get a little bit more on here. And something that I might suggest, if you have an oil filter like strap wrench, you could probably put that on your old jounce bumper and that's gonna help it kind of uh, loosen up a little bit and you'll be able to get a little bit more power on it. But go ahead and got that loose and there you go. So I'm just gonna spin this while I have my socket in place. And it's a pretty long stud here, so just keep spinning until we get this removed. There we go, so that's off. So I'll go ahead and grab that nut that's up there and we'll get ready to put our new sumo spring in. Now, if you have your front raised up, that should again, give you enough clearance to be able to slide this in. And we just have a flat washer and then a nylon nut here. And this is gonna be a 13 millimeter. So kind of similar concept, we'll get that fed on there. I'm just gonna put my 13 millimeter wrench or a socket on there and we're gonna get this nice and tight. Now on the driver's side, I mentioned that I did have a little bit more issues uh, just because of those hard lines and getting the washer and the nut fed on, a little tip, you can use a, um, you can use a vice grip if you have the needle nose style to kind of hold that in place while you feed it up and that way you can get the washer and the nut on. I'm able to use my hands on the passenger side here so it is a little bit easier, but we'll go ahead and I got my Ratcheting wrench here. I'll just slide that on top of the nut. So now I'll just go ahead with my wrench on there and I'm just gonna tighten this down just by rotating the sumo spring until we get it nice and tight. And then I'm just gonna throw just a few quick turns on that nut just to really secure it down. And that's pretty much gonna be it. So it's a pretty easy install. Again, the hardest part is gonna be raising up the front to get your axle to droop to create that clearance. So if you can do the passenger side first to kind of get the idea of it and what you're uh, dealing with, the driver's side should be a little trickier, but you'll be able to get it knocked out. So now with this installed, all we need to do is repeat on the other side, and then we'll just lower this down and test it out and see the difference that it makes. So now we're back out on our test course. We have our Sumo Springs installed, and immediately as I make the first small turn, I notice a difference. Uh, already it just feels a little bit planted. Uh, the suspension just doesn't feel like it's just teetering kind of back and forth. It pulls that sway out, and even over the bumps, it's just kind of leveled it out quite a bit. Uh, just feels a little bit heavier duty in the front. Not in an uncomfortable way, but a more sure-footed way. So let's go ahead, we'll make a nice wide turn here. And absolutely a lot more planted feeling, just the steering feel is a lot better. Um, so I'm curious to see on the slalom kind of how it, uh, how it reacts, because a lot of times that's where you really notice is if you're making a wide turn and then you kind of cut back a little bit of a slalom, you're really gonna see that suspension kind of pop back to life a little bit faster than before. And that's just because of that engagement point being a little bit earlier. So, oh yeah, absolutely. Much, much better. And then I'm gonna make a big sweeping turn up here. So that's gonna be uh, something else that's gonna be pretty noticeable. I think what it is, is it doesn't feel like the RV's having to catch up because the body's leaning. It's just planted a little bit better. So a little bit more, I don't know, 
car-like, I guess, in handling rather than just a large RV. And I think that's kind of a good thing, especially when you're still, you know, being able to drive as normal, you just have a better steering feel. It's a lot more comfortable for maneuvering. I mean, yeah, absolutely. It's a lot, lot more sprightly. So overall, I mean, really, really easy install for something that you're gonna feel every time you drive it. And I think you're gonna be happy you make the first turn and you'll notice the difference. And that was a look and installation of the Sumo Springs front helper springs on a 2005 workhorse W-series.